Hello everybody and welcome back to this video series on setting up my metadata driven processing framework for Azure Data Factory from scratch in your environment. This is part six and what we're going to do in part six of this video series is looking at creating a service principle within our Azure tenant and actually deploying the data factory that we've that we need to run the framework itself. So if we just quickly refer to Visual Studio and the deployment steps, what we're going to focus on is steps 10 and 11. And what I've done here, here is uh, I've described them as creating a service principle for the data factory deployment, and then also creating a service principle to execute the data factory pipelines themselves. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm actually just going to use the same service principle for doing both of those operations. I'm just going to create one service principle. I'm going to make it an owner on the resource group, and then I'm going to use that for both. I'm sure your security will be um, far better and, and not as lax as that, but I'm just going to cheat and, and use that same service principle. So what we need to do is in our Azure portal, I'm just going to go to Azure Active Directory and then I'm going to go to App Registrations and I'm going to create a new registration and I'm going to call this Framework SPN. This only has access to the single tenant and then we're just going to provide a redirect URL, not that it's actually going to be used. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to grab Notepad and just start pasting in a few of these details as I do them, because I, I will forget, as you've seen. Oops. So we've created that service principle. And then what I want to do is I want the client ID. Let's stick that in my Notepad as well. And I want to give this service principle a secret or a key. So I'm just going to add a new secret. I'm going to cheat and say it never expires. I'm just going to call it the default key for this SPN. And it's created that for me. And I'm now just going to copy that key from the portal. It's generated one for me for the SPN. So I've got that. And then that's all I need. You'll notice say that you copy that secret before you navigate away. So, so yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm then just going to come back to my Azure Active Directory because there's one other thing that I'm going to need here. And I'm just going to grab it while I think about it. In the properties blade, I want the tenant ID. So the ID of the, the Azure Active Directory instance that I'm using. Um, I'm just going to drop that into my notepad as well. So that single SPN is what I've created that I've called Framework SPN. Um, so that kind of covers off um, points nine, uh, 10 and, and 11 there. So I've created that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grant that SPN permissions to my framework resource group that we've been creating and working on. So I can do that via the access control panel and I can go to role assignments. Let's add a new role assignment. I'm going to say it's an owner. I say because I'm cheating, I'm being a little lax. Uh, I'm just going to paste in that service principle name and save that. So that one service principle I've created is now an owner on the entire resource group. So all the resources are in there, uh, it will uh, it'll be inherited from the resource group level and it'll be an owner on those resources as well. So I say cheating a little bit, but uh, I'm sure you can create a, a more granular security model in your environment. So next up, I actually want to focus on step number 12, actually deploying the data factory. Um, so in my development environment that, that is connected to the, the GitHub repo where you've got this solution from, the data factory and all its artifacts are already in there. So the, the 
the data sets, the, the link services, and importantly, the, the pipelines that make up the framework. So what I want to do is I want to take those artifacts that you've downloaded from my GitHub repo, and what we're going to do is we're going to use this PowerShell script to now publish them to your Azure environment, to your data factory. So I'm going to use the PowerShell integrated scripts environment. Um, there's obviously lots of ways that you can run PowerShell now. Go, go your own way. I quite like the IC, so I, I'm, I'm still using it. Um, so things in here that we need to populate is the resource group, which I, I do believe I've called it exactly the same thing. Yes, I have. Good. Um, the data factory, which I can't remember. Um, I've called it framework factory 01. So let's stick that in. It is in the Azure region of UK South. Um, and then I just need to actually replace um, these values with the, the things that I've just created. So I have these set up as environment variables, um, but I'm going to use those new details that, um, that I've just created that you saw me uh, do. So firstly, the tenant ID. We need the Azure subscription ID, which I can actually just copy from most places actually around the Azure portal. So I'm just going to copy that subscription ID. In that, let's grab the SPN app ID. And then finally, the SPN secret. So those are all the bits I need. Um, you'll notice that this is going to use the, the AZ and the, the AZ data factory modules. So if you don't really have them, uh, go and uh, install those modules, make sure they're updated to the latest version. I know I already have that, so uh, I'm just going to leave that. Um, and then I'm actually just going to run this. No, I'm not. Let's, uh, let's prove there's no cheating here. Let's actually just go into the data factory. So the data factory that we deployed, it's not connected to Git. It's a, a vanilla data factory. There's there's nothing in here at all. Oh yeah, they've now moved that to the management hub. So vanilla data factory. Um, let's now just run this PowerShell script. So what it's going to do is um, it's going to use for the most part the data factory commandlets. Um, to, to create the data factory if it isn't already there. It will then create the link services. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll use the definition files that I've created from my data factory as the, the information that we then use with the PowerShell commandlet to actually do the work to, to push this now to, to your environment. Same for the data sets. Um, for the pipelines, it's not using the, the data factory command at the moment. There's a, a bug in there with the weight activity expression. So instead, I'm just using the uh, new Azure resource one, which actually hits the API, which um, will allow that to, to work with the definition file. And then lastly, for, for a trigger, although um, you might not need to use triggers yet. So that's all this script's going to do is take that JSON from the repo and then using the information that we added at the top, just publish and deploy that to your Azure Data Factory. So we can see that's now done. Lots of green, we like that. So if I come back to this Data Factory, if I just do edit, and then let's just refresh. So we now have my Data Factory. I've got the, the pipelines in there. looking good. I've got a single data set and then I've also got some link services. So um, what I'm going to do is we've we've basically now actually done step 13 in here as well. Um, I'm just going to test the data factory link service connections because of course they, they were deployed using information about my development environment, not about the Azure tenant where we're currently running. Um, so let's just check out those. Um, so the support database, it's, no, sorry, let's not start with that one. Let's start with Key Vault. That'll be better. Um, 
So I don't want key vault information that's entered manually. I want to go and get that from the subscription where this data factory is running, which is that free trial subscription that I've created. And if it looks at that, it finds my framework keys, key vault. Um, and you recall that uh, a few videos ago, I added data factory using its MSI, using using this value here, basically, as it's now got um, that added as in the access policies of that key vault. So I can do a test connection that's now working. So I'm now going to apply that with the, the context of, of this local Azure environment that I'm working in. Um, next up, let's do our database. Um, and I'm totally going to forget the names of the secrets that I added. Um, so I do want to use key vaults. Um, I'm just going to use my keys link service. Um, the secret name is the thing that I need to change here, which uh, so I, I can't remember. Uh, so in my key vault, the secrets that I added, I want the SQL DB connection string, obviously. Um, that's the, the secret name that I want. And you, you remember when I added that secret, um, it had the SQL authentication details embedded in that connection string that we created. So I can do a test on that, which is failed. Good. Ah, firewall issue. Okay, ah, interesting. Um, I'm just going to apply that, although it's failed. So the problem that we've got is that the Azure SQL DB, um, you recall when I added the firewall rules to allow my, my client, my local laptop, to connect to the SQL DB. Um, I now actually just need to go in here and say, any other Azure services can also access um, the SQL database, uh, which is this one just here. They've changed this uh, panel recently, I think. So that means that then any any other Azure resources, you know, they're not going to be blocked by the same firewall rules. Good, not scripted. You know, I'm doing this just the same as you are. So um, having done that and saved that setting, let's just come back in here. And let's just do a test connection again. Success, good. Um, didn't actually change anything, so no need to apply. And then lastly, the link service for my Azure Function app. Uh, I don't want it manually. I'm going to find it from my subscription, from my free trial. It's found that one. Um, yes, it's going to use Key Vault, so my, my Key Vault keys. And the secret name, which uh, again, totally forgotten, something obvious probably. Functions default key, good. And let's paste that in there. Now you don't get a test connection option, unfortunately, with the functions app. Um, you just have to trust that that's working. But uh, hopefully, we we know we've got the right key. So I'm going to apply that. So I've now publish that data factory and I've updated all of those link services to now be relevant to the Ensure environment where I'm working using what I'd already created in Key Vault. And then I'm lastly just going to publish those changes. So data factory can actually start working with the, the correct versions of those link service connections. Good. So that then covers off, I think, finally point 15 then. So Quite a lot um, that we've done there. We've created those service principles. We've published the data factory artifacts from the, the local repo using PowerShell. We've checked them out in our data factory UI. We've updated the link service connections and tested them to now make them relevant to our Azure tenants. And we've now published uh, the data factory with those link service changes as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you, folks. I hope you can join me again soon.